Hey guys, uh, I'm just doing a short little video right now and I want to cover these graphics cards. Now, what all three of these are, these are Trident cards, uh, 8900 Trident cards, ISA cards. Now, Trident is known as a bit of a budget video card company and um, I have to say my first experiences with Trident cards uh, and Trident video chipsets were not very good. Uh, it was my first uh, like IBM PC and it had built-in Trident and uh, I remember it had graphical glitches whenever I tried to play Baldur's Gate. Now it was a pretty simple fix, I just had to look it up and uh, I think I had to disable one little option. But um, it kind of soured my view of Trident a little bit and they're not known as being you know like quality high-end video card makers. Uh, but I did want to talk about these cards, uh, the 8900 series, just because uh, I, they're very useful and interesting uh, ISA cards. Um, and the one cool thing about them is they are both they are both 16-bit and 8-bit cards. So have you noticed I make make some cuts in this video? It's because this guy here is in a really bad mood, and he keeps fighting with the other dog. And I'm trying to shoot this video, and all of a sudden I hear rah, rah, coming from this guy. Um, so yeah, if there's a lot of awkward cuts, it's, it's because I'm trying to break up the dogs because for some reason they're in a really bad mood. This guy is. <laughs> Anyways, as I was saying before I was interrupted, the cool thing about the 8900s is they're kind of like dual 16-bit slash 8-bit VGA cards. So uh, usually it's not so pronounced on this one. Uh, the, these come from different manufacturers. There's different makes. And um, this, there'll be a jumper thing here. And sometimes you have to manually set it to 8-bit mode. And um, others, I think this one, it might be there. The, you might set it. Anyways, I was trying to say here is sometimes like if there isn't jumpers, it's automatic. It automatically detects if it's uh, in an 8-bit or 16-bit slot, which is cool because these are really, they're pretty common and it's good if you have like an 8088 machine or something like that and you just want a VGA card in it. Um, these should work fine and you can also use them in all your other uh, machines with 16-bit ISA slots. So it's cool that way, but the real reason I wanted to check these out is because there are different revisions of these. Now, I have three of them here, and I think these are all the three revisions. Now, if I can get this thing to focus, there is the, okay, there's the 8900C chipset, and then this one here is the B, and then we have the D. Now, the D chipset, there they go again. Okay, now the D chipset, it supposedly, it does something with memory uh, where this thing is supposedly pretty fast. Uh, I have seen some, some, uh, I've seen some benchmark results where this thing is right up there with like the ET4000 and um, the ArcLogic ISA VGA cards, which is pretty impressive. Now, I'm, I'm not quite sure the video quality of these cards, probably okay. Um, you probably really wouldn't notice unless you're a real stickler for that. Um, but yeah, I really want to see how these cards stack up. If there's really much of a difference between um, in speeds between the C and the B, and then I definitely want to see how the uh, the D here stacks up. So uh, I'm gonna run these in my uh, 386 system, but it's my the one with the Cyrix um, the Cyrix chip. So here's the system we're gonna be testing the cards in. Now this is a 33 megahertz. It uses the Cyrix DLC 386 to 46 upgrade chip in it. Um, so this should this machine should work pretty well for benchmarking these cards. This machine did run Quake with the ET4000, interestingly enough, at 1.4 frames per second. I didn't bother testing the other cards because it's agonizingly slow, but I thought it'd be interesting to show. Um, so anyways, first we're going to look at the benchmark results for 3D Bench 1.0C. Uh, the ET4000 clearly ahead, not by a ton, but, you know, one6 uh, frames per second, at least over the B version, but the D, the D's faster than the B and C, but only by a point, couple frames, uh, not that stunning. Um, 
Here's PCB bench at 320 by 200. Again, the ET4000 beating the other cards, not by a ton. Uh, and again, the D version <laughs> it ties with the C and is only like 0.1 or 2 uh, FPS ahead of the, the B. So um, nothing spectacular there. Okay, so now we're going to look at Doom. This is what you're seeing here is going to be Doom running on the E8900 uh, D chip. Uh, uh, and I also want to say I did notice a little bit of a visual quality dip from the ET4000. It's just the colors weren't quite as vibrant. The picture wasn't quite as good, but it's not horrible. So, I mean, it, don't feel bad about picture quality if you're using the, one of these Trident cards. But anyways, yeah, here's Doom. Again, I don't see a big difference here. I mean, the ET4000 based card is beating the pants. Not a horrible amount, but it is beating the other cards. Um, but yeah, not... A real difference with the D revision. I don't know what's going on here. Now, I've only tested three games because this, well, two benchmark programs and then Doom. Um, so, I mean, this was by no means like a big time uh, benchmark test. So maybe uh, the AD revision would do a lot better in some other games, but I just wanted to make this like a quick video, a real like quickie video, so I didn't really do extensive testing here. So, uh, but from these small pool of results, I'm not really repressed, impressed with the D revision of the 8900. So uh, what we're going to do right now is take a really quick look at how it does with the whole uh, working in an 8-bit slot, which is very useful if you don't have like a CGA or EGA monitor and you have an XT or PC class machine and you just want it to work with your VGA monitor. Alright, so not quite what I expected from the uh, 8900 D, uh, but you know, like I said, it that's the C, isn't it? The <laughs> the 8900 D, um, but like it could maybe it's just this card, uh, maybe there was something that was skewing the results. But um, I did want to check the 8 bit compatibility, so I pulled out this computer here, which is uh, based on it's an NEC V20, so it's a it's an XT based machine. Uh, with 8-bit slots in it, and trying the three cards, the D did not work uh, automatically. Now there's probably some combination for jumpers to set it to 8-bit mode, but the I can tell you the C and the, what I have in there right now, the B, they worked just fine. Uh, I put them in and it auto-detected it was in an 8-bit slot, and uh, it worked. Um, so you also may be wondering, what is this strange XT machine uh, in front of me? Well, I think that's a video for another time.